Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna be going over what is a capacitor. And before we do that, please do me a favor, support my channel, support my videos, help me reach 100,000 subscribers. Please subscribe to my channel down there in the bottom right-hand corner. And when you're done or when you're ready, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below and give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much for all of that. I appreciate it. Here we go, what is a capacitor? Okay, a capacitor is simply a device, a passive electronic device that stores electrical charge. I think there's kind of two ways you can think about it. You can think about it as storing electrical charge, and you can also think about it as a capacitor is a device that stores electric potential energy. Where is the charge stored? Where the charge is stored on the plates of the capacitor, and where is that energy stored? Well, that energy is stored in... Uh, the electric field, which is between the plates of the capacitor. So um, a, a capacitor do two things. They're kind of the same thing, but they store charge and they store energy. All right, now, let's just see. If you see a picture, not necessarily a schematic diagram, but you see a picture in a book, sometimes you'll see a picture or a diagram of a book of the capacitor. Capacitors, we usually call them like a parallel plate capacitor. We have one plate is positively charged. We have another plate is electrically charged and negatively charged. They're attached to a battery, which causes those uh, charges to move across from one to the other plate. And the battery does the work to move the charges. And then between the plates, we get an electric field. And these are the electric field lines for our capacitor. And I'll go in, over a little more detail how that happens in a few minutes. But I just want to show you, this is a picture of a computer board. And you can see there are lots of capacitors on here. They are all over the place, smoothing out the signal, storing energy, storing charge to be used later, acting as filters and such and such. These are all capacitors. These five things are all capacitors. These are all capacitors. These more over here, down here, these are all electrolytic simple capacitors. Okay, if you take one of those off of there, then it looks something like this. This is a capacitor. It has a capacitance of 100 microfarads and has a breakthrough voltage of 100 volts. You can't put more than 100 volts on there, otherwise the thing will pop. And like we said, it has a capacitance of 100 microfarads. Now what we're going to do is take the cover off of that. This is the plastic cover I took off, and then it looks just like this cylinder, silver cylinder with metal. There's metal on the outside. We're going to open that up. And we're going to take it out, and it looks like this. And you can see that when we unroll it, this is paper, and those are the leads. We unroll it, then it looks like this. These are the metal plates of the capacitor, which are attached to these leads, the metal plates of the capacitor. That's where the energy and the charge, that's where the charge is stored. And this is the dielectric. In this case, it's just paper, and it has some oil on it. This one's kind of dried out, but this is just paper. And that goes between the plates to keep uh, the charge from moving from one plate to another, okay? That's like an insulator that separates the plates so the charges don't move across the plates. And then if I take the whole thing out and lay it out on a piece of paper like that, it looks like this. Once again, we have the charged plates, they're parallel plates. That's a piece of metal, it's a plate, it's just a piece of metal, that's a plate. And then we have the dielectric. In this case, it's just paper and usually has some oil on it. And that's the dielectric. It is the insulator that keeps the plates insulated from each other. And of course, these plates are not charged, but you could have the plates charged or the plates do get charged, of course, also. And you have one plate that is negatively charged, and then you have one plate that is positively charged. And all the stuff, the two plates and the two pieces of the capacitor of the dielectric are just rolled up together and rolled up into that uh, kind of tower capacitor cap looking thing. Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's not really that complicated. It's just two pieces of metal, basically. All right, now when we get the charges stored on the plates of the capacitor, it works like this. Okay, this is just a diagram made. This is one plate of the capacitor. This is the other plate. There's a switch. It's tied up here. It's connected to a nine volt battery. We have the positive terminal and the negative terminal. And what we're going to do is we are going to close that switch. And as soon as we close that switch, then the battery is going to do work moving the charges from one plate to another. And what happens basically is we have the negative plates, the negative charges on this plate, and the battery is going to pull those charges and put them on the other plate because that negative is attracted to that positive and repelled by that negative. So that single negative charge, you could think of it as a single electron or a coulomb or some unit of charge, 
moves across, and then we have a charge plate. We have one plate that's positively charged and one plate that's negatively charged. Now, that's just the first unit of charge. The battery is going to continue doing work until that plate is just about charged, and then you're going to have negatives on one side, positives on the other, and we have one more unit of charge, and the battery can do no more work. So now we have our charged plates. Now, the battery can do a certain amount of work. I do have a video that talks about work and the work done by the battery, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But now we have our positively charged plate because it has electrons have been taken away from this plate. They've been put on this plate, so that's negatively charged. And then we have an electric field between those two plates, and that electric field flows from the positive plate to the negative plate. And that is how we get that capacitor charge. Just simply hook it up to some voltage source so that you have a potential difference across those plates. And then you get plates. One has a negative charge. One has a positive charge. The charge is the same, but the sign is the opposite. All right. Okay. Next, Aufgabe. Okay. So when you see it in a picture or in a diagram or a schematic, we have a picture that looks like this. This is the capacitor. The capacitor, it has the parallel lines are the same length. You can tell this is the battery or the voltage source because the lines are different lengths. So this is the capacitor. You can have capacitors in parallel. These are in parallel to each other. Okay, and these capacitors are in series to each other. Of course, you can have combinations where you have both positive, you need both series and parallel capacitors together. Okay, but I just want to show you that's what a simple schematic looks like of three capacitors hooked up to this battery in parallel and three capacitors hooked up to this battery in series, parallel and series. All right, now this is the equation that we use to calculate the capacitance of a capacitor. So I'm going to go through each of these things carefully here. C is simply for the capacitance. So this says the capacitance is equal to the area of the plate. So A is the area of the plate in square meters. Okay, there's two plates, but just take the area of one of the plates because you need two plates to have the capacitor. So you have the area of the plates in um, square meters. The distance between the plates is also measured in meters. That's the D on the bottom here. And then we have E is the permittivity of free space. This E0 is a constant, and it has the value of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Coulomb squared, Newton meter squared. You'll see different units for that, but they're all equivalents, just expressed differently. And then K is the dielectric constant. Every dielectric has its own dielectric constant. And sometimes you'll see this symbol used, which is the same as this with the R, this E0. And this ER, this is often used in Europe, but in the United States, we usually use K for the dielectric constant, okay? So that's the equation that we use, and you can see from that equation that the symbol for capacitance, okay, is going to be a C. That's like the equation symbol, like Q equals V times C, okay? And the SI unit for capacitance is the farad, which has the abbreviation capital F. So this is the unit, and this is the equation symbol. This is named after Michael Faraday. And the farad is a Coulomb volt, and one farad is one Coulomb volt. So if you had a capacitor that had a capacitance of one farad, and you hooked it up to one volt, then you could store one Coulomb of charge. So it's one Coulomb of charge per volt of potential difference across that capacitor. And then when we talk about capacitors and the units and all this stuff, we would write it something like this, where we say C is equal to 47 microfarads, or we'd say the capacitance of that capacitor is 47 microfarads. And usually, the capacitance of capacitors is less than 1. In this type, it's actually uh, 10 to the minus 6. 47 times 10 to the minus 6, significantly less than 1. Of course, you can nowadays get capacitors that have a capacitance of 1 and more than 1, but typically, it's less than a farad. Okay, now I think we're going to do one last thing. We just want to look at this equation. The interesting thing I think you should know about how this works, understand the relationship between these values and the capacitance of the capacitor. There's really only three things that affect the capacitance of the capacitor. That's the dielectric, K. If we put a dielectric in the capacitance, in the capacitor, then uh, we can increase the capacitance. If we don't have a dielectric, then you just have an air-filled capacitor. The dielectric constant for air is 1. 
and that wouldn't really change things because one times anything is still the same value. Okay, but if you put a dielectric in the pit, like the paper or some other material plastic between the plates, then you can increase the capacitance, the area of the plates, and also the distance between the plates. Now, it's interesting to notice that you should know the capacitance is directly proportional to the area. So the area is on the top half of this fraction. That means if we increase the area, then we're going to increase the capacitance. They're directly related. And that should make sense if you think about the charge stored. The bigger the plates are, the more charge you can store on those plates. Okay, so those two things are directly proportional to each other, the capacitance and the area of the plates. And the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. So if we increase the distance, because this is on the bottom half of this fraction in the denominator, okay, then you're going to be dividing. If you, do, if you increase the distance, you're going to be dividing by a bigger number. And if you divide by a bigger number, then you get a smaller result for the capacitance. So the distance between the plates, as the plates get farther apart, then the capacitance decreases because those are inversely proportional. Okay, so there you go. That is just a quick introduction into what is a capacitor. Okay, hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Like I said, please subscribe to my channel. Help me get to 100,000 subscribers. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Let me know how you like the video. And don't forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next video.